Icebreaker and Nature Entertainment Studios is a company set up by Luc Jacquet, who is an Academy Award-winning film director, myself a producer, and the third person who is an entrepreneur. A while ago, I would have introduced myself as a film producer. However, now I say I'm a content producer. Because uh, if we look at the media space, there's a lot of change going on. In theory, we live in golden times. You see that the consumption of content and the overall global revenues are on a rise. They keep on growing and growing. However, the media space is undergoing a rapid change. Convergence, once again, is all the rage between media companies, telecommunication companies, and technology companies. And uh, the borders we used to know are becoming transparent and the sectors within are dissolving. What does that mean for us? Um, basically, it poses a lot of challenges for us as content producers, but it offers a lot of opportunities as well. I think the model of one project, one medium, one exploitation chain is something of the past. We need to think differently about how we produce content and where we basically launch our content. Traditional methods of financing still exist, of course, and, and you know they're not as fast to adapt as the media landscape is uh, adapting, but the traditional financing sources, they limit the scope and uh, the, the ways we can exploit our content. So we, we thought like, okay, we have been doing very successful nature documentaries, but it's becoming harder and harder, even for us who are probably at the top of the game in this genre, to get our pictures financed. To get our content financed and our productions, they take three years, four years, five years. And we, we are seeing more and more that in order to raise the money, we are left with no rights. We are left with no rights and all we are at the end is an employee with a salary. And the beneficiary of that is actually the people who give us the money. So let's see, Stan said that a lot and uh, this is what we are facing at the moment. Netflix is just this little bubble over there. Look at the other players who are entering into the market. There will be a huge demand for content, which should be good news actually, but the hard facts are quite differently. It's becoming more and more difficult for independent producers to raise the finance and retain the rights in their projects. What we end up doing is we make the projects, but we have no rights, which was something we wanted to change. And if we look at the old system, let's say we make a movie with a, a budget of 10 million, which may sound a lot. In nature documentaries, the big ones, this is a very standard average budget. What we would we do in the past, we would go to our national broadcast, our national distributor, we'd go to our subsidy, we would find a co-producer, we would find a sales agent, we would, if there's still money needed, maybe we, we would know one buyer somewhere else, we would do pre-sale, and if the budget was still not covered, we would go for gap financing. That had a very expensive effect, because all that money, we paid three times for it. Basically, out of a 10 million budget, you end up having contractual charges to it. The money you've secured does not come on day one, so you add uh, financial charges to it. So easily from a 10 million project, you end up having to raise 12 million. Your rights are gone. In distribution, the people who gave you money, ask for high fees, and retain the rights. So that is very expensive money, and we thought about how can we change that? We live now in a multi-format, multi-content uh, sort of media landscape. However, the financing, the traditional financing, is still not adaptable. We have to take a choice. Do I want to make a movie? Do I want to make a TV series? Do I want to work for the streaming services? I cannot combine all this. And especially in what we do, nature content, for every minute you see, um, we produce, we shoot a thousand minutes. That is no joke. We have shooting ratios of 1 to 500 to up to 1 to 1,000. Quite opposite to a James Bond film, where everything that does not make it on screen has no value. In our case, it has a lot of value, but we could never access it because all the people who financed the movie we did said, oh, no, no, don't touch your raw material. So basically, we had a treasure 
in the basement that we could not access. Once you change this, and the only way to change this is to change the financing method. You go from the very expensive model of having a 10 million film that suddenly costs 12 million, and if we look at it, we want to do multiple things with our content. We want to do a movie, we want to do a TV series, we want to do an exhibition. Doing all this in the old way would suddenly make a 10 million project turn it into a 50 million project. However, if we change the way we finance it, let's say we come up with all the money as a producer, and yeah, of course, we access the subsidy, we access any sort of soft money we can get, and maybe we do one pre-sale, which has more of a psychological reason for, for the market, that, oh yeah, somebody bought it already. Uh, that means you don't have the financing costs because you collect the money on day one, you don't have the contractual charges, you don't have completion bonds and all this, which brings the budget back to the original 10 million. And actually, if you produce three different things out of it, so we will develop a movie, a TV series, an exhibition, we will pre-produce all three at once and we'll go and shoot all the material at once. What I just said would cost 15 million, suddenly only costs 11 million to do all three. And you can do that because you have the rights to all the material. How do you find this sort of money? This is where blockchain comes into play, where we said, instead of going to the traditional media financiers, we go to the normal audience, we tokenize, we issue a security token, which is basically a debt obligation or a bond that contains all the contracts, all the different paperwork that before used to be a big book of 200 pages of you know, all the contracts and everything. You can all put that into a token nowadays, which means you can even deal with smaller investors. If you would come to me five years ago and said, oh, Sophocles, I have a thousand euros, can I invest in one of your projects? I would say, thank you, but no thank you, I cannot manage your thousand euros. No way. It would become interesting from 100,000 euros upwards. That was the minimum ticket size. Now suddenly with the blockchain, you can actually handle a 10 euro investment, which makes your potential investment market much wider and much bigger. So that's what we do with uh, Icebreaker. The process is basically structured in two stages. The first one is a security token offering to, to raise the capital to do our productions. And the second stage is a utility token, which is more of a tool to, in, to create an interaction, a system between all the different stakeholders. Historically, our kind of content attracted the science community, the educational community, NGOs, multinational companies that would sponsor us. But we never had a system to make them all work together and cooperate. This is what we want to do with a platform that will be underneath the productions. So step one, a security token offering that basically secures all the money to do a slate of projects over the next 10 years, where the rights are all in our possession, which means we can do what we want with the material, which will have a tremendous effect on distribution as well, because once you don't ask for money up front, everybody's ready to lower their fees. They don't take a risk. You eliminate a few of the intermediaries. You don't have a bank. You don't have private equity, which means you come into a recoupment position much faster. And the economic results are of a great magnitude, both for your investors as well as for you as the producer. Step two is the platform. The platform basically, uh, if I take an example of a multinational company, let's say Mercedes sponsored us. They would give us some money. What would we give them in exchange? We give them a logo on the poster and 50 tickets to the premiere, to be honest. And they would be like, oh yeah, we sponsored this. That was all they got. Now we can tell them, you can have access to the material we shoot. You can donate it to a school. That is a very tangible thing for a sponsor, not just a logo. We go even, even further. The young generation of today has a disconnect with the media world. They're concerned about the environment, they're concerned about nature, they don't go to cinema, they don't watch television, but they express themselves with content. We want to create hackathons where we give them all our raw material. We invite 200 young filmmakers every two years, put them in a room for three days and give them access to our entire raw material so they can express themselves in their language, in their channels, 
in the media they consume, which will bring, bring back a young audience to our movies. We're not taking away any of the existing audience. Actually, we're bringing a new audience into what we do. That's Icebreaker in a nutshell. Thank you.